Growing takes time. Ranch Systems has the tools to help you quickly get the information you need so you can get on with your day. Check your water, crop status, and weather from real sensors in your field. To learn more, contact us today. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Ag Network reporting to you here today with Ian LeMay, president of the California Fresh Fruit Association at their annual conference uh, down here in beautiful Southern California in San Diego. I uh, wanted to talk with you specifically about our expectations uh, for the farm bill uh, this, this coming year. And we've had some great investments in uh, through equip right through soil and water conservation efforts uh, trying to move things into ag tech mm -hmm. innovations as well because labor is, is is a regular issue that we're dealing with and so many different things that, that we need to improve to meet the uh, the goals that our, our local government has mm -hmm. for us as well tell us about it yeah, so Matthew, first, thanks for being here. Thank you to your family for always supporting the California Fresh Fruit Association. Uh, every five years, the United States agriculture sector gets a great opportunity to work with our federal representatives in Congress and the Senate to reauthorize the Farm Bill. Uh, that time is coming due again. The last Farm Bill was reauthorized in 2018. Uh, the specialty crop industry had some great successes, and so the ex expectation again in 2023 is that we can continue to move the ball forward. The California Fresh Fruit Association has the privilege of working with the Specialty Crop Farm Bill Alliance, which is an organization of over 200 ag associations and companies across the United States that come together to work in a coalition format. Over the last year, those 200 organizations have spent countless hours coming up with 109 priorities for this upcoming Farm Bill. The one in particular that we're really excited about deals with ag tech and trying to incentivize companies to adopt new technologies, new forms of automation, not to replace labor, but to assist and ease the demand of labor uh, throughout the specialty crop commodity sector. Our proposal calls for a cost share uh, program. As you mentioned, the federal government already has many of these like Equip. Equip in California widely adopted, widely utilized, and has transitioned tens and hundreds of thousands of acres from flood irrigation to drip irrigation. It's a cost share program. What we want to do is mimic that in the ag tech space. So if a grower comes and has a great new tool that they would like to adopt that will create efficiencies within their uh, production, uh, they can go to NRCS or another division of USDA that would oversee this program, say, I'd like to buy six units, they cost X, uh, the government would cost share maybe 50% and the plus up there, if the government covers 50%, you might instead of six units buy eight or 10 or 12, which helps us scale as an industry to then create a more cost effective purchase mechanism across the board. So it's not a new idea of a proposal, but we want to utilize this catalyst that's been successful in the industry already in an area that we know we need in ag tech. Right, particularly from the California Fresh Fruit Association and the crops that you work with, uh, there are a lot of labor-intensive practices involved, things which if, if they had the means, right, mm -hmm. we have some up-and-coming technology, but farmers can't afford it necessarily, especially with, with a lot of their input costs uh, and inflation going on too, right? Exactly. And so what this would help do to do is scale. We have a lot of very innovative growers uh, throughout the California Fresh Fruit Association membership, uh, changing cultural practices, the way they plant uh, their, their trees or vines to create additional efficiencies uh, to make them more applicable for new technologies. We have members who are testing drones to pick stone fruit. We have autonomous uh, vehicles that are moving table grapes up and down rows to create uh, a, a safer work environment. These are all great new technologies that we want to see widely adopted. <clears throat> a program like the one we're proposing really could act as an escalator or, or an accelerator, more appropriately, to get these technologies adopted. Again, it creates a safer, more efficient work environment. You uh, were in our proposal, we actually uh, account for uh, the retraining of the existing workforce. And so uh, there are monies set aside so that the existing workforce can understand how to and learn how, how to use these tools. And ultimately, you know, it's a net benefit for our industry. It's where we need to go. We hope Congress sees the, the positive nature of this. And uh, we're, we're fully engaged with our federal representatives and, and look forward to a good reauthorization. 
Well, that would be great to see. Obviously, it takes time, right, for the government to put together this farm bill. I remember last time it came around, it, it took quite a while to get the knot tied, per se. How soon do you think we'll be able to hear more about this? Yeah, well, uh, to your point, the 2012 Farm Bill ended up being the 2014 Farm Bill because Congress took some extra years to actually get it reauthorized. But we have some great leadership in what we call the Four Corners in, in uh, both the House and the Senate, uh, some seasoned veterans in, in uh, the likes of Senator Stabenow and Bozeman, uh, and some really great leadership in the House with uh, Congressman Thompson leading the House Ag Committee. Uh, the Farm Bill currently is set to uh, expire September 30th. Uh, Congress has it within its authority to put some extensions extensions in there. I would expect that we might see a, a short-term extension, but leadership is telling us in both sides, in the Senate and the House, that they want to get this done. And so what that means for industry is that we have to have uh, our proposals vetted, ready, uh, and, and are really willing and, and eager to lean in with our elected officials to make sure that they see the value of these proposals, and, and then to also be patient. Um, right. these, these negotiations are detailed. We're talking about billions of dollars in federal spending. And uh, our, our elected representatives will take the appropriate amount of time to make sure that we have full-throated conversations around these issues. And we just have to be stand ready to deliver when, when asked to deliver. Industry has been really great at that, and uh, we're excited to be a part of that coalition. Awesome. Well, great to see your representation at the table. Read more about these things in our publications. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.